Okay, so today we're going to be continue talking about finite volume uh, unstructured mesh. And uh, uh, so this is Monday. Uh, in this Wednesday, there is going to be a guest lecture by uh, a doctor from Comso. So he's going to be talking about finite elements, uh, also unstructured mesh. So today we're going to finish uh, discussing finite volume uh, unstructured mesh and uh, start uh, a bit more theoretical aspects of finite element to prepare for the Wednesday's lecture. All right. So okay, so we uh, started uh, discussing finite volume uh, unstructured mesh last Friday. So basically, uh, uh, a unstructured mesh discretizes a arbitrary area of volume in three dimension into small volumes. And these volumes has to be non-overlapping, so that uh, uh, they, they also has to don't leave any gaps for final volume to work. And uh, uh, there are actually a lot more than a single way to decompose these volume into uh, decompose the domain into volumes. For example, uh, uh, two popular ways are the so-called self-centered and the node-centered final volume. So for example, if you have a rectangular mesh, it is not always true that you have to use these triangles as control volumes. There are actually alternative ways of deciding even from exactly the same mesh what the control volumes are. So the, the simplest way, of course, is just to use these triangles as control volumes, right? I mean, they uh, decompose the domain into non-overlapping uh, areas. But an alternative way uh, is the so-called uh, node-centered finite volume. And the advantage is that uh, it actually uses a much less number of control volumes for the same mesh. I mean, this is uh, more apparent in three dimensions, but like uh, you can already see this in two dimensions. If you count how many cells there are in this simple example, we have cells 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, something like 12 or 13 cells. But if you only count the number of nodes, well, there are only three interior nodes, and uh, the um, the nodes on the boundary may be a little bit more, but the total number is actually less than the total number of cells. The bigger the problem is, the more apparent it is, the number of uh, uh, nodes is less than the number of cells. And in three dimensions, the number of nodes is actually uh, less for an even bigger margin than the number of tetrahedrals if you decompose the domain into tetrahedrals. So to use node-based uh, control volume, you have to define a control volume for every node, right? And it's not uh, obvious how to do that. So you have to define a control volume for this node, for example, that mm, doesn't overlap with this node or this node or this node. So here's a common way to do it. The common way to do it is to find the cell center of every cell adjacent to each node. And then also find the edge center of all the edges adjacent to the same node. And then I'm going to connect all the edge centers with the neighboring cell centers. Oh, well, you get a very irregular shaped uh, control volume that surrounds a particular node. But this is a perfectly fine control volume. And if you do the same thing for a neighboring node, for example, for this node, you are going to be constructing a control volume that is uh, shares the, exactly the same boundary as the blue node, right? So this is a perfectly fine way of uh, uh, disc discretizing the entire space into non-overlapping control volumes that doesn't give any gaps. So this is the so-called node-centered finite volume, right? So if you, uh, um, 
in terms of uh, uh, programming, it's actually a lot more difficult than the self-centered ones, just because the interfaces between. Uh, first of all, you have to find out what the control volume are, control volumes are, and then you have to figure out uh, the uh, the normals of each piece of interface. And it uh, uh, looks like uh, not so complicated in 2D, but in 3D it's actually pretty complicated. But like if you, if you look at uh, uh, codes, research code or commercial code you might encounter in the future, it's quite common that uh, finite volume code may be actually node-centered like that. All right, so uh, today we are still going to be focused on uh, self-centered finite volume, so that makes uh, uh, it makes things a bit clearer, but like uh, it's good to for you to know there exists a node-centered finite volume that uses a different type of control volumes.